It's striking the piece of glass, right? Yeah. And uh, at an angle theta i, yeah? yeah. So maybe a little figure would help on this question. So, like, if this is the horizontal, uh, and this here is the normal. Team viewer, uh, team viewer is shut off. Team viewer is down? Yeah. Um, go ahead and reconnect. We'll have you connect back here. Okay, so let's do a couple of normals here since this has a diameter. Okay. And let's say that you are incident. So let's say that this is the beam, yeah? Coming at an angle. So let's orient the axis so that uh, one of the beams would fall at right at the intersection of the horizontal and the normal. So this other beam would be here such that these two rays are parallel to each other yeah yeah okay and uh, so the diameter of the beam of course would go perpendicular to uh, to both of these as you can imagine so this is the diameter of the beam right and let's say that this is d so uh, this angle here would be theta i yeah the incident angle right here theta i Okay, maybe if we make this squared, it will be, uh, uh, I mean, if we make this triangle, it will be better for the purposes of this question. Let me see. Uh, yeah, okay. And, uh, okay, continuing on. So, this would be diameter D. Uh, and uh, right here, so now the beam will have to react, yeah? So it's going to have an elliptical shape here, right? Right here, it's going to have sort of an elliptical shape. But what's going to happen is that this left side beam, let's say it reflects down by an angle theta r. Okay, and um, so will the other beam, of course. When it hits here, uh, when this other beam, let, let's say, hits here, so let's do a third normal here. Parallel, of course, so this is the normal, 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 the black one. So this guy will also refract. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do we draw a diameter? We draw a diameter the same exact way we drew it the first time. So we go perpendicular to these two beams. Yeah? Yeah, that's so, so this is 90 degree angle. So this would be the new diameter. Like let's yeah, yeah, let's right. call it D prime. Right, so now from here on, can you uh, continue? Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, this, of course, angle here has to be 90 degree. Let's do it in red. So we said that this is elliptical here in the plane. So it is. And then it's going to go back. Uh, circular as these two rays refract. Okay, well, uh, we know that this here is a 90 degree angle, and uh, we know that this here is a 90 degree angle, which means uh, this here has to be uh, theta r right here. Let me erase this out of the way. So this angle here has to be uh, theta incident. Uh, because this guy here is theta incident. This is from similar triangles. Uh, okay, so let me let me show you uh, one good ge geometry argument to to justify this. Uh, we know that 
this line is perpendicular to this line because this is the normal uh, vertical, this is the horizontal. And we know that uh, this line here with two dashes is perpendicular to this line here. And uh, this dash and two and this dash and two dashes make an angle of theta i. Therefore, this dash and two dashes and dash will have to make an angle of theta i. So the angles between the lines I call dash and two dashes has to be the same theta i. Okay. So now if I call this length here from here to here l, then uh, from the triangle above. Uh, we know that uh, we know that uh, L is or D is L cosine theta i and uh, I could make the same exact argument in the triangle below uh, we know that in the triangle below this angle here has to be theta r and so from the angle below I could make this sort of the same argument that d prime which is the new diameter of the ray has to equal l cosine theta r and if i divide these two i will get d prime so 2 over 1 d prime over d the l's will cancel out i get cosine theta r over cosine theta i okay but the question does not list theta r in the given so I would have to replace, I would have to eliminate this guy and get rid of it in favor of the remaining variables in the problem. It's okay to have D because that was listed in the problem. It's okay to have theta I because it's, it's listed in the problem. So now I need to find an, another equation that would remove theta R from the equation. Uh, and then I will come back and plug it into this equation. So let's call this equation 1. And how will we do that? from Snell's law. Snell's law says Snell's law uh, says that uh, D or N1 and R cosine theta I has to equal so this is uh, let's say let's call it an I incidence has to equal N R which is the glass times cosine or oops sorry this is sine uh, sine theta r and I know this is one because it's vacuum uh, the glass is uh, given in the question as ng so I'm gonna read so let's call this ng okay so that means sine theta r has to equal sine theta i over ng which means theta r has to equal inverse sine uh, sine of theta i over ng and I could take this and plug it in one so plug in one to eliminate theta r so then I will get if I do that uh, I will get a d prime which is the new diameter over D has to equal uh, cosine theta R so cosine all of this cosine of inverse sine of sine theta I over NG divided by cosine theta I And so solve for d prime. So d prime, the new diameter will be d times all of this right hand side. Cosine inverse sine sine of theta i and g, and this whole thing is inside the cosine divided by cosine theta. Uh, I could do a little bit of trig here to simplify this answer further um, if you want. This is an okay acceptable answer, but uh, you know, we could do some trig here. So we can call this, no, not this, we could call this u 
so we would have uh, inverse sine sine theta i over mg equals u and then uh, take sine both sides so you will get sine u equals sine theta i over mg okay let's see if we do some the triangle here for angle u uh, the triangle for angle u will look something like this and so this is 90 degrees so this will be angle u uh, so sine is opposite over the hypotenuse so this would be sine theta i uh, this would be the hypotenuse which would make this uh, which would make this mg squared minus sine squared theta i and uh, I'm interested in cosine uh, so sine inverse of u sine inverse uh, with uh, uh, no, sorry, I meant to call this whole thing u. This whole thing u, yeah. This whole thing u. Let's do it in green. So this whole thing, we call it u. Okay, and then we flip it. Okay, so we are interested in cosine u. So from the triangle, you could see that cosine u is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this would be m squared uh, for the glass minus sine squared theta i over oh this has to be a square root here uh, square root over m over mg and if I bring this under the square root I can simplify this further to be m uh, to be 1 because this is the same thing as m squared so put it under the same square root would be 1 minus sine theta i over mg all squared and this whole thing is under the square root so to the one half so this would be cosine u so I could replace this whole term here by this red guy so then I would get d prime Uh, to be uh, um, D over cosine theta i so d equals so d prime equals d over cosine theta i times this whole thing times one minus sine squared theta i over m squared g uh, square root. And this is the new diameter of the laser beam. This concludes this problem.